Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and welcome back to DCS World 2.5.6, and today we're going to delve into the EEGS-5 radar-directed gun sight for the F-16C Viper. Now this has been a highly anticipated update to the Viper, and it's been a feature that people have really, really wanted since day one of the F-16C release, but I can really see why Eagle Dynamics took a little bit longer to bring this feature to the jet. It is certainly, certainly not a copy and paste job from the F-A-18C over to the F-16. It is a completely and new and different system and works very, very well as you guys are about to see. Now we've got a Republic of China Air Force skin on our F-16 and we've got some People's Liberation Army Air Force J-11As out in front of us to act as targets for our demonstration and discussion of the EEG S-5 system. And so we're flying with the uh, Taiwanese Air Force today simply because uh, we're keeping with the theme of the hopefully soon to be released Mariana's map that should be coming soon. And because of that, we're also going to delve in and take a little bit of a look at the things you should keep in mind and the different factors at play when engaging in aerial combat over large expanses of featureless terrain such as the ocean that we have here in the background of our F-16 that DCS World players may not have had to encounter before with the maps that we currently have in DCS. As much thought as you put into flying over mountains and engaging in combat over mountains has to be put into flying safely over large expanses of water. So, I hope you guys liked the video, and uh, if you do like the video, certainly uh, like and subscribe and all that jazz, and uh, I'm sure most people will definitely, definitely like this system within the F-16. Alrighty guys, we'll go ahead and get our jets set up for combat here. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off these uh, speed and altitude tapes. I think those get in the way and don't really serve much of a purpose outside of the landing pattern. We'll get our joint helmet mounted queuing system turned up. We'll get over to the correct uh, countermeasures uh, program that I want, as well as we will go ahead and get into track while scan mode and push out our radar uh, range out a little bit there. And we'll go ahead and talk about one thing that we can add to and kind of works alongside the fact that we're uh, flying with a Republic of China Air Force uh, skin on our jet here is in the upcoming Marianas map that you, everyone is super excited for and hopefully comes within the near future here. There's going to be a lot of air combat over water. And there is a very big danger in flying over water that a lot of people don't uh, really realize. And it hasn't really necessarily been a problem for us because on um, the Persian Gulf map, for instance, there's lots of islands and lots of things in the water to give us a bit of depth perception. But on very flat, very glassy days over water, um, it's very, very difficult to judge your altitude over that water. And so if you're in a swirling dogfight and things like that, you really need to make sure you pay attention to your altitude when you're flying over that nice glassy ocean because it's very, very easy, even in DCS world here, not just in real life, to accidentally smack yourself into that ground if you're not paying attention because it's just very much a much more difficult proposition to figure out how high you are off that water on those very flat, very glassy, calm days. Now, one thing that uh, will really, really help is if you add some wind to your missions and give yourself some white caps and some relief on the ground, as we're seeing here, and that actually allows your eyes, whether it's in a simulation here in DCS world or in real life, to get a judge of the distance uh, from yourself down to that uh, ocean level or the sea level. So basically, another kind of cool thing that white caps gives you is it also kind of is an environmental indicator of how fast the wind is blowing over the water. Super, super important for you DCS World Carrier pilots because white caps tend to show up at about 10 knots of wind flowing over the surface of the water and then they tend to more develop into these bigger white caps at around 12 knots of wind uh, flowing over the water. So if you have uh, white caps on the water when you're approaching your carrier you know that you're going to be uh, in more wind and you're going to be bumped around a little bit more than you would be if there were no white caps on that water. So kind of a cool little environmental factor that uh, a lot of pilots in DCS world don't know about and that kind of danger of flying over glassy water is uh, definitely out there and is definitely true. So uh, keep that in mind next time you get into a swirling dogfight with some J-11s over uh, the uh, uh, Marianas map. So we'll go ahead and continue on here. We've got everything set up that we want to have set up here. And we'll go ahead and Give these two J-11s our priority target. 
And of course we can swap between these two guys and we can see they're definitely starting to spread out a little bit. I'm gonna go over and hop into air to air mode. That'll help us out a little bit. And we'll go ahead and kill the missile volume since we're just gonna be using guns for today. No need to have the uh, cockpit being all loud for us with that uh, sidewinder growl. So as we go through this dogfight, I'll pause at different points as so we can talk about why exactly the EEGS gun sight in the F-16 is so accurate. And there's a couple reasons why it is and, uh, and why it's actually a better solution, in my opinion, than what's available to us in other DCS World jets like the JF-17, F-14, and F-A-18. And of course the F-15, back to Flaming Cliffs jets. All right, so we can just barely see those J-11s coming into visual range out there. We can see little dots. And they are definitely higher above me. That's all right, though. We'll make up for it. The thrust-to-weight ratio of our little F-16 against that those big old J-11s. three miles out and we are just flying against the AI today of course but uh, that is just as adequate for demonstrating what we need to demonstrate today backing off on that G make sure well almost blacked out there not too good get into dogfight mode and we'll start trying to lock this guy up there we go And right here we can see the new dogfight HUD for the F-16C. And of course we have a, a horizon indicator um, and that will shift around and show you where exactly the horizon is and what your attitude is in regards to the horizon. So that way you have a very good and very bold indication of where exactly your jet is pointed. Because in a dogfight, you've got G's crushing you, you've got lots of different things going on, you've got the RWR screaming at you, you've got uh, the radio, guys on the radio screaming at you, things like that. It's very, very easy to get disoriented, and especially if you get into a situation where you start to get a little uh, target fixation, it's very, very easy to fly yourself right on into the ground. And that's especially true on this new Marianas map that's gonna be coming out, when you've got this very flat, very featureless terrain of water if you're flying on a nice, flat, classy day. And even really these uh, little uh, white caps on the water don't give you that much relief. So you're really going to have to pay attention to what the attitude of your jet is and where you're flying uh, your jet in terms of where you're pointed. So that way you don't just accidentally kill yourself. Um, because that's half the battle is making sure in a dogfight you don't kill yourself. You kill the bad guy. Um, and similarly... Your joint helmet mounted queuing system is also going to come into effect here and, and aircraft with that joint helmet mounted queuing system is going to be uh, super effective in making sure you know your altitude at all times wherever you look and especially over these big uh, stretches of ocean. So we'll go ahead and continue with the dogfight here. Oh, one more thing to add, of course, we have a range indicator. Now, normally this is over the actual gun sight when you have, you know, that kind of old-fashioned, uh, old, older-style actual pipper that moves around and is directed by the radar in terms of the scale that kind of moves around that gun sight. But now we've actually got the range indicator moving around our target on our HUD here. It'd be very cool if this actually showed up on our joint helmet mount and queuing system site, but... Uh, Alas, it only shows up on our HUD here, so keep that in mind. And as the dotted line starts to come around and come around, it shows us the, um, the amount of range to that target. So once you have a fully dotted circle around your target, you know you're pretty much within uh, range to actually shoot him. So we'll go ahead and continue on here. And as it's coming around, coming around. All right, we're coming in after him. Trying to make sure we dump a little energy here, make sure that we do not get into a situation where we overshoot. And here we go. So here is another uh, 
portion of the uh, dogfight uh, HUD, and we can see that that attitude indicator has really, really changed here. When we've got a big old circle like this, that is uh, the avionics of the jet telling you, hey, bro, you are in trouble. You've got a very, very much a nose down attitude, and uh, you need to make sure you get that attitude back up, especially over that glassy sea where it's very, very hard to uh, judge your, your altitude. And I don't know if you guys can see this through YouTube, but just looking forward in the jet right here, I know that I'm up at uh, 18,000 feet at the moment, but just looking down here, right here through my uh, screen and looking at the HUD here, it, if I didn't have that, I would have no idea how, what my altitude was. I would think that I would be much, much lower than I actually was. And similarly, you can actually start to think you're much, much higher than you actually are. And that's why it's so dangerous. And so let's talk about another part of the EEGS system that makes it so accurate. And that is, in fact, this gun funnel right here. So that, if we zoom in on our on our enemy down here, this J11, we can see that we've got the funnel of our EEGS more or less, you know, it's a little bit off, but more or less on the wingtips of our uh, J11 opponent down here. And so why is that important? Well, having that uh, funnel and allowing that funnel to be positioned on those wingtips gives us a much, much more accurate gun solution. And the reason for this is the lateral axis of our jet when we have the edges of the gun funnel on the wingtips of our opponent down here, when that our lateral axis of our jet, which is the axis that runs from wingtip to wingtip behind us here, is parallel to our enemies down here. And so why is that important? Well, that means that if we squeeze the trigger right now, we, we'd miss, obviously, because we don't have the correct symbology positioned on our J11 opponent here. But if we shot right now, our bullets would be coming out and be arcing more or less kind of like this, if you think about that in 3D space and time. And that is going to allow for much, much more of a potential hit on our target here. And m many more bullets could potentially hit our target, thus guaranteeing us a kill, or at least getting that other aircraft, our opponent here, out of the fight and him needed to go home. Now, a lot of the other aircraft in DCS, F-18, JF-17, and uh, F-14, don't have this gun funnel. And so thus, it's more or less up to the pilot to uh, kind of get his lateral axis of his jet, again, the axis that runs from wingtip to wingtip, parallel to his target in order to maximize that probability of a hit and continued hits. Because if you are kind of off, say we were off a little bit more here, our our bullets may arc kind of off in this direction or off in this direction here, making for a much, much lower probability of having a hit or if we do hit it, having continuous hits that would actually put that other jet out of commission. And so this gun funnel is really, really helpful to you as a pilot because it allows you to get those axes in parallel and get kind of the most high probability of continued hits on the target. So we'll go ahead and continue with the dogfight here and to see what we can do. All right, so that's pretty cool right there. That is a perfect example of what I was just talking about. And I actually held down the trigger a bit too long simply to give you guys this beautiful picture here. And of course, we've got tracers on the jet to give you guys a beautiful picture of what we're talking about here in terms of that lateral axis being matched up and that beat zone just pummeling that J11 right there. So as we can see, why don't we zoom on in here and we can see, holy cow, that is going to be a whole lot of hits on that poor J11 down there. And you can see exactly what I was talking about there. We've got our lateral axes of our jets matched up so that those bullets are coming out and they're coming out and they're coming and they're falling right down the funnel right onto that jet. If we're in an F-18 or an F-14 or a JF-17, our lateral axes may be tipped to the left or to the right just slightly. And those bullets, instead of that beautiful arc coming right down onto that JF-7 or that J-11 down there, almost said, almost said the designation of the thunder there, it would be coming off to the right hand side or off to the left hand side. And as you can see, that would make for a much, much lower probability of a hit or even continued hits after that initial hit. And so thus, a lot of these bullets are going to end up hitting that J11 and end up just shredding it. 
Now, another thing that is maybe more or less something a little bit more controversial for, or something that DCS World Pilots may have not factored in, is the accuracy of our cannon here. You know, I actually like it that we have a bit of a spread of bullets coming out here. And why is that? Well, if we just had one straight line and suddenly we were off just a little bit left or right, that nice funnel and cone of bullets come down could just miss entirely and just come right down. I can't tell you how many times I've done that when flying jets with super, super accurate cannons in DCS world. And that would be like in the F-14 or specifically the J-11 or even the MiG-21 with super accurate cannons. Those That line of bullets might just barely miss and every single one of those misses. But if we have a kind of a spread of bullets coming down here all the way throughout our cone, we can actually really, really get a bunch of hits and our accuracy doesn't necessarily need to be completely and totally spot on for us to get those continued hits in that beat zone. So it, like I said, I kind of been saying this idea of a beat zone already, but a beat zone is kind of the idea of having an area for which your weapons, um, in fact, cannon shells in this potential uh, instance here would be hitting the target rather than having just a simple you know a laser like cut right through that we're having a whole bunch of hits all over this jet and if we really zoom in we can see hits on this jet we've got hits on the left wing we've got hits on the right wing root we've got hits on the fuselage here we've got hits we can already see smoke starting to come out of the j11's uh, left engine here and all these kinds of things so we're getting hits all over that jet getting a beat zone that really shows it all over the jet whereas if we were in an f14 or a jf17 we'd probably get hits all in one spot on this jet and we, while we might saw the wing off like i said though it increases the potential of a complete and total whiff and that kind of uh comes back not so much with the F-14, but with the difference between Eastern and Western approaches to air-to-air um, -air gunnery. You can kind of think of this as the MiG-21 and thus the cannon that's in the JF-17 as a result, because it is the same weapon, in fact, was designed not necessarily for air-to-air -air combat between two fighters, but air-to-air -air combat between a f an interceptor and a bomber. So you're going after, you're a Soviet uh, PVO pilot, and you're going after a B-52. Uh, you want to have that big, big old cannon with that big laser, because that B-52 is not going to be evading very much. But if we have a fast-moving J-11, just like this guy, with our 20-millimeter M61A1 Vulcan cannon and our F-16 right here, and we have this nice spread, it allows us to get that beat zone and potentially have more potential for hits on that target, hits on different parts of that target to actually shred that J11 and make him go down. Whereas like I've been saying a couple times here, if we just had that laser cannon like we have in the JF-17, if we're just off by just a hair, all of our rounds completely and totally miss. Also, we have the added benefit of a higher rate of fire, which even though we've got tracers here, there's a heck of a lot more bullets out there than just these tracers um, because the 20 millimeter Vulcan's uh, rate of fire is just so astronomically high, it increases the probability of hits on our target down here. So we'll go ahead and continue on with the dogfight here. And if we see anything else, we'll go ahead and uh, point those out. And we can see right there that that J11 is totally and totally done. All right, so let's go ahead and find his wingman and go after his wingman here. And we can of course see the attitude indicator change as we bring our nose up and we bring our nose back on down towards the horizon. And so it's pretty cool in that way. All right, where's our other foe? All right, he's off to our left here. Oh, I got a visual on him. Oh no, that's a parachute from the other guy. Alrighty, fellas, we're coming into another merge with two J11s again. And hopefully we can get another couple cool shots for you guys to show off the EEGS gun sight system. Alright, we'll throw her under radar or dogfight mode and we'll pop the radar back on. And we can see that attitude indicator is kind of like that smiley face when we're good to go. And if it changes away from a smiley face, you know that your attitude is either uh, nose high or nose low. 
and like I said, we just gotta really keep track of that, especially over these uh, watery battlefields that we're gonna be flying over quite frequently in the future of DCS World. All right, we're coming on around. We'll kick out a burner. All right, we'll come after this guy here. And so the smiley face went away, so we're nose high. And we're coming nose down, so it's turning into a circle. No good. Alright, right here once again. So you can kind of see that this is more of a snapshot. We didn't have necessarily as good of a tracking gun solution on this guy, but it should still be really good because once again, our funnel really, really helped us line up our lateral axes on our enemy up here. And of course, uh, we dragged our shoot point, this little circle right here, right across him. So we should be getting some good hits. Now it won't be probably as big of an impact as that perfect Draken gun skill we got on our first uh, try with that first J11, but we'll go ahead and go with it and see what happens here. And yep, we went ahead and winged him. And right there we got him. So the gun keeps firing after I pause it, of course. You know, any control that you have held when you pause in DCS world continues on um, until you hit that button again. So that's I don't normally shoot that much. That's more of a normal shot for me. You only just need a quick, quick shot on your with your guns, and that way you've got plenty more ammunition for the next guy. And of course, just like that, it's incredibly accurate even for just those quick little snapshots just like that. So it really, really helps you. And as you can see, our smiley face is much, much smaller. So we're pretty happy. We're good to go. We're nose up and we'll bring it on back down to the horizon. You'll see that smiley face come back. So that J11 is down for the count. We've got to make sure that we regain as much energy as possible here because we kind of followed him up pretty darn high. And we'll have to find out where his wingman is. Based on RWR indications, I would imagine he's off to the to the right here. Oh, there he is. He's actually off to our right hand our right hand side. He's behind us. So it's kind of just a quick note on that. Um, keep in mind here that RWR indications aren't always going to be absolutely perfect. They are affected by the position of the receiving antennas on the aircraft in the F-16. They are actually um, on the sides of the intakes up here, um, as well as on the sides of the nose. You can see those little antenna prongs on the sides of the nose. As so. When you're moving your aircraft around and you're rolling hard and you're pulling hard, you know, whether you're evading a SAM or you're in a dogfight such as where we are now, you could potentially get erroneous indications on your RWR as the computer system gets a little bit kind of uh, confused, so to speak, as to where exactly the bad guy is. So we'll go ahead and continue on with this, make sure we have a good picture on where the bad guys are. You know, pausing a dogfight isn't exactly the best thing to do. Oh, he's got me pretty dead to rights. Let's see if we can get him to overshoot. Yep. Modulating that stick pull, make sure we don't get rid of too much energy. And of course, we're coming down to the ocean here, so we're keeping an eye on our altitude, so we don't want to kill ourselves by hitting the ocean. Remember, those white caps help, but you really just got to keep paying attention to that. All right, he's going to try and power out of it. But the thrust to weight ratio on my F-16 is pretty nice. And of course there's the big DCS AI loop. Uh, J-11s tend to not be so bad with this, but uh, other jets tend to be pretty horrible, like the F-5. Never dogfight an AI F-5. Alright, here we go. We got him now. Right, come back out of burner, full mill still. 
All right, back to burners. All right, right there, another perfect, perfect example of what the EEG, EEGS can do for you in the F-16 here. It's a fantastic shot. You know, it's less bullets fired than my very first example there, but it really doesn't matter. With the M61A1 cannon, that's a whole heck of a lot of lead and explosive shells flying out there to hit your target. And so because the EEGS with the gun funnel allows you to line up your lateral axis of your jet, with the lateral axis of our opponent out here, we can really, really, really beat him with a ton of cannon shells and uh, bullets hitting them. And so that's going to be a very, very nice and very, very destructive hit on that uh, J-11. Hopefully the pilot can get out of it, but uh, who knows? Uh, we may get some hits on the cockpit here. And there we go. Yep, so it looks like the pilot got out, so good for him. Alrighty, so I hope you guys kind of got a little bit of a uh, idea of why the EEGS gun sight for the F-16 is so fantastic, as well as a little bit of a more nuanced idea of why dogfighting and flying in general over featureless ocean can be a little bit inherently dangerous and why it's very, very important to make sure you keep an eye on your altitude at all times. Uh, you're using a radar altimeter really isn't uh, needed due to the fact that, uh, you know, we are flying over sea level, so MSL works just fine. You just want to make sure your uh, altimeter setting is correct uh, before you trust that completely. So make sure you just keep an eye glued on that uh, altimeter setting and uh, on your altimeter, as well as making sure uh, you use the gun funnel to its maximum advantage. So, happy hunting, and I'm sure a lot of people are very, very, very happy to have a radar-directed gun sight in the F-16 now, and I kind of understand now why it took a little bit longer for Eagle Dynamics to get a radar-directed gun sight out there for the F-16, because it is certainly, certainly, certainly not a copy-and-paste job um, from the F-18 Hornet to the F-16. It is a very, very different system. So, thanks for watching guys, and fly safe as always.